Hello, hello everybody. So as I, I remember when I was a small kid, I started to use Blender. It's where I discovered uh, 3D actually. And uh, now it's crazy for me to be here in uh, Amsterdam presenting a talk for Ubisoft with Blender. So yes, the title of my talk is like Blender at the Ubisoft Strategic Innovation Lab. So I'm pretty sure some of you know what Ubisoft is. We are one of the biggest company a game company uh, in the world. We are working on licenses so, such as Assassin's Creed, Tom Clancy, etc. And uh, I am working in a department called the Ubisoft Strategic Innovation Lab, and I'm going to explain a, a little bit what we are doing and what's uh, our role uh, inside Ubisoft. And here is the the, the three points I'm going to 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 see the, that we are going to see in this presentation. So the first one is like, I'm going to present the, the, the Strat Lab, the Strategic Innovation Lab, then we are going to see some use cases of Blender in the prototypes that we do. I'm actually going to show you two of the prototypes that we have done, and then we are going to see uh, a little bit the story of Blender uh, at Ubisoft, how it uh, started, and how uh, we ended up funding Blender in the Blender fund. So the mission, the mission of the Strategic Innovation Lab is to anticipate the future. So we are a team, we are now 25 people, and we are uh, exploring different techs, uh, different business models, soci uh, societal changes, and uh, we have uh, a team of uh, researchers that are doing prospective research. So we have four main activities. The first one being so prospective research. We are uh, dealing with subjects such as blockchain, such as 5G, such as AI, and um, uh, th uh, those teams are doing presentation and are trying to, to communicate to, uh, to the other people at Ubisoft uh, around those subjects. Then we have open innovation. Uh, the idea is that we are, um, we are dealing with uh, different companies to, to co-create, to co-innovate together. And uh, for instance, we have a program at Station F. Station F is actually one of the biggest incubator, um, startup incu incubator of the world. And uh, we have uh, uh, we we are teaming up with different startups in order to to see what they are doing. It's a, it's basically a win-win situation because we learn and we share, and they share with us uh, ideas and and things. And then we have a, a communication team, and this communication communication team is in charge of sharing what we are doing at the lab uh, internally, but also externally. And the idea is that they also sometimes create big events. Uh, and uh, we are going to see one event at the end of the presentation. It's the Ubisoft Blender Jam that we organized like two weeks ago, and uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of it. And finally, the team I'm working in, the prototyping team, we are called the makers, and uh, we are there for making uh, prototypes and to making things more tangible. So we are uh, showing internally and sometimes exter externally, like here, prototypes in order to convince in a more concrete way, uh, the things that we are exploring at the lab. So here is the, the team, part of the team. So we have Caroline Jonteur. She's ac actually directing the lab. She's the chief uh, strategic um, innovation officer at uh, Ubisoft. And uh, on the right side, you have the makers team. So we have Nathalie Paca. Uh, she is the producer of the maker, and she's also a project director. We have Amandine. She, she is a UX strategist, uh, when we are prototyping, we always start with a UX question. We are like trying to find what are the needs of our users, and that's where everything starts in our process. Then we have Robert. Uh, he is a senior R&D uh, programmer. We have Mark. Uh, he is a senior programmer. We have Jana. Uh, she is a R&D um, programmer, programming assistant. We have Francois, junior game club programmer. And then we have uh, Nicola, our game designer. And finally, myself, I'm Pierre Armand. Uh, I'm um, a technical artist and a developer. I'm doing 2D sketching, I'm doing uh, 3D assets, and, uh, but I'm mainly programming, in fact, because we are a small team and we need to, uh, to, to create proto prototype fast and we need to, to code a lot. So. so now what I propose to you is to see uh, Blender use cases uh, in two of our prototypes. And the first one uh, is a prototype that we've made uh, by, uh, on the blockchain by creating a world on the blockchain. So the idea of this prototype is, I'm going to show you a, a, a small teaser and I'm going to talk on, uh, over it. 
And the idea is that as a player, you can uh, pick an island that corresponds to a, a number, and this number is what we call the seed, and it represents a specific island that will be generated procedurally. And then after this, you, uh, this island is uh, stamped on the blockchain. So it is actually the own property of the player. And except from the, um, from the terrain in terms of art, uh, because the terrain is uh, generated procedurally, ex except from the terrain, the, all the props and the character were made in Blender. So as you can see, as a player, you can hide treasures, you can collect different seeds, and the seeds gives you access to uh, uh, the possibility of creating a new island. Uh, you need to, to put uh, a seed in order to generate a new one. And uh, as you can see, as you will see, you can also plant a flag that uh, represents the fact that you are the pioneer of this island, you first discovered it, and then you can also create challenges for the other players. So when they, vi they are visiting your island, they will have to reproduce different paths and figures in the, in the air. So, so this is a challenge, for instance. So this prototype was made in uh, about five months, and it's, uh, we were uh, uh, really a really small te team back in, the, in that time. And uh, yes, so we usually in the team we are uh, we have different. Um, we have different. We need to do to do different things. So we are a very multitask team, in fact. So before diving into Blender, I'm going to show you uh, early sketches that I've done while brainstorming with the team. So I'm I'm mainly doing sketches in Krita, another open source software. And uh, at the beginning, I was like trying to find what is going to be the character of this prototype. And uh, I knew I wanted to go in a more locally style because uh, uh, with uh, procedural generation content and with the time that we had, uh, we, it, it was uh, something that uh, could uh, make us save more time because no texturing, no UV unwrap, and everything could, could read well in terms of shapes. So I, I tried to design different style of characters, but at the beginning of the, of the prototyping session, we needed to go fast and to test the controls of the characters. So uh, I quickly went into Blender doing this uh, early, early version of a character with uh, simple animations in order to uh, go in Unity, the engine that we actually use for prototyping, in order to, to, to test uh, the three Cs, so the controls. I also uh, did some tests with props, as you can see, exploring uh, a more locally style. And then I also used cycles for creating like a, a, a small scene in order to see how it could look like. And again, uh, this was done really quickly because, uh, of course, the, the main goal is to show, uh, to focus to, toward what we want to, to, to present in the prototypes in terms of mechanics and in terms of, uh, of design. And finally, uh, I did this character uh, called Gaspar. We don't know if it's a rabbit or a fox. It's, uh, it's in, in between. And uh, uh, it was uh, so the final character that was used uh, in, in the prototype. And uh, I've done some animations. And I have a very iter iterative process. Uh, I, I always have Unity and Blender and Krita opened. And I'm always going back and forth. Like uh, The cool thing is that I don't know if you know, but you can drag a, and drop a blend file in Unity, and it actually reads. So that's a pretty cool uh, workflow for a small team. So yes, this was done pretty quickly. And one thing that I absolutely love in Blender is vertex painting. Uh, in games, we use vertex painting a lot. And the tools are so simple to use in Blender. And it, uh, it was a huge time saver for me, because we are in, the, in this low poly style, and we wanted to have like the props that were uh, placed dynamically on the terrain that was generated, and we wanted to have different types of uh, colors for the different parts of the model. So in Blender, uh, if you select faces and you press Shift K in vertex color, it will fill the faces that you selected. And as you can see on the, the right picture, I've created a, grad a gradient of uh, different red tints, and those tints correspond to different materials that will be picked in a lookup texture. Uh, in the in the shader and uh, the 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 x axis of the of the texture represents the height of the props so if the props is on top of a mountain it will like pick a, a, a lighter color and if it's in more toward the, the ground it will pick a more like a darker color and another cool thing in blender is the decimation modifier 
Uh, usually in bigger games, we do LODs by hand because we want to control a bit more the shapes. But in this context, because it was a low poly, a low poly style, uh, I, I just put a, a decimation modifier on top of the, every props and everything was working pretty fine in terms of like uh, seeing uh, trees from far away and the shapes could read and the vertex color was, uh, was kept. So it was a really huge time saver for me and uh, it actually worked uh, well in the workflow. So now I want to show you another project. Uh, it's called Project Oikos. And in this case, uh, this prototype was an ecosystemic prototype where we wanted to show to, the, to our player how uh, an ecosystem works in terms of interaction between different species. So it's a split screen uh, co-op game where I'm going to show you a demo where you, you can uh, possess a character. And so you can select a bird, you can select a fish, you can select a worm, and you can select a, a leaf. I, I also uh, uh, had the opportunity to record this music for the prototype it, during the, the, the playtime. And uh, as you can see, so it's a, it's a split, split screen, screen game where you need to balance the ecosystem. So you need to be... Um, you, you, you need to, 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 to speak a lot with your, with your, uh, your friend in order to understand the different um, goals of the character, to see, to understand their needs, to understand how they interact uh, with the, the, the different systems that are in the game. So you are playing as one character, but you have also AIs, and we're going to see uh, some technical details about how AIs navigate, especially the worms. Uh, but you have AIs that are working alone and that, that are living their life in the ecosystem. And uh, when you possess a character, you just uh, switch this character from an AI to a player. <laughs> you, you're becoming a player controller, basically. And at any time, you can switch. And uh, yes, the, the pond can go, uh, can go very green in terms of the water color, can be dirty, and you need to, to, to basically save the ecosystem in the, the time that you have. So same process, when we start, we brainstorm a lot, we, and uh, we have a lot of ideas, and uh, at the beginning, uh, I'm doing 2D sketches while brainstorming in order to like, try to find a visual identity of the game. But as you can see, at the beginning, it didn't end up uh, uh, in the same style of what you, you saw in the, in the trailer. So exploring different things on Krita, I also uh, explored 2D animation. If um, back in the time, Grease Pencil was not what it is today, so today I probably will animate in the Grease Pencil rather than in Krita. But uh, I've done some quick animation for testing like more humoristic stuff. Like uh, for me, uh, like a rock with eyes is like so cute, so I tried, <laughs> I tried to do this. And I've also tested uh, how a style like this could look uh, in, uh, in 3D. So I think those uh, those gifs were rep were uh, sh uh, were shot in the, a very early version of Blender, like alpha version of Blender 2.8, and uh, I tried to hand paint a lot uh, uh, the, the textures, but again it ended up to be a lot of time while uh, to 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 spend, uh, and uh, I, I still need to code, so it's uh, it's a bit of time wasted, and we de we decided at the end to go with a more uh, cartoony style. But before, I also did a very small test of uh, what, could look, uh, what could a slice of a wall look like, and playing with different uh, scales and things like this. So, and finally, those are the characters that uh, we decided to create. So those are the sketches with big eyes. And this was the first render that I've done in uh, Cycles. Uh, using uh, the denoising, I think, back in the time. No, maybe not. <laughs> but uh, it was like just to see how those creatures could look like in terms of like cartoony style. And as you can see in uh, in engine, so the the three characters, the the four characters, sorry, have big eyes, and uh, the the eyes were like a way to communicate their emotions. And uh, uh, so, for instance, you can see the worms really angry right now, and we played with this in the game. And in the middle, you can see that that's the first gym. Uh, of the character, so Jim is like uh, a way to test the controls of the character and to see how the camera will be positioned. And this was the first uh, Jim that we created. And for the eyes, 
the, I, I tested two methods. The first one was using bones that were like uh, rotated for each loop of the, the eyelids. And finally, at the end, uh, it, was too, uh, it, it was costing too much in terms of performances, so I went using two shape keys, one for uh, closing the eye and one for correcting the, the shape of the eye in the middle because shape keys are linear. And uh, it ended up uh, really, uh, to be really, uh, really cool for us because I could join both eyes uh, in the mesh, and the shape, key, the shape keys will still be there. So I had a file with one eye, and I just had to merge them into the characters. And in the engine, we only had one mesh for, for uh, with the, the both eyelid closing and opening. So that that was a huge performance save for us. And finally, uh, the not finally, but uh, actually, one thing that was uh, important for us was the fact that the worm could navigate on every surfaces of the wall of the terrain. So what I've done is I've experimented a lot uh, with uh, generating the nav mesh in the engine, but it was like too much, uh, too much time to spend. So I went into Blender using Boolean modifier. I just uh, combined the big rocks together, and uh, it ended up to uh, being the nav mesh, so the surface where the, the creature could walk on. And a final thing, uh, creating a skybox in Blender was a really cool experience. In fact, you just have to take a camera with a 90 degree field of view, and you, sh you shoot in the different directions of the, so the top, bottom, etc. And then you just render this, and you have a, cu a cube map. And so uh, I've done this with cycles because I really like the bouncing light uh, below the, the clouds. And there are some other stuff that we explored, but I don't have time to show you everything. But uh, I explored things with curves uh, in Blender, and yes. <laughs> so finally, I wanted to show you uh, things that we've done in order to, to promote Blender at Ubisoft. So in fact, I had the, really, um, I, I had the honor to, to, to have trust from my managers in order to uh, go in front of the top management of Ubisoft and to, to show them what was Blender and what was open source uh, in the context of Blender. And uh, I had a really good response and uh, a, a few months later, they agreed on like uh, funding Blender. So for me, that was like s amazing, and I was like so <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> but but this is like a work of a lot of people. So behind the scenes, we created an internal community. We are a lot of people at Ubisoft. Uh, for, for personal projects like using Blender, and we started to discuss a lot, sharing stuff, sharing add-ons, sharing techniques. So at the beginning, we were a few, like we were maybe five at the, just the beginning, but after we changed the tools that we use internally to chat, and then it grew up really fast, and now we are more than 350 people chatting about Blender at Ubisoft, so it's pretty cool. And uh, I had the opportunity to do many presentations, uh, workshops, organize training inside, uh, at Ubisoft, like showing simple stuff that are so easy to do in Blender and that are a huge time saver for modeling, for animation, rigging, and stuff like this. Um, we have um, a, a book at the Strategic Innovation Lab that we do internally and that we share with all the studios, and I had a chance to write an article about Blender in it, and um, uh, we also did internals video for just more, you know, more top-down videos where we explain uh, without going into technical details what Blender is. And um, I also teamed up with uh, the Ubisoft Animation Studios. They are probably in the room somewhere <laughs> here. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we, uh, we did a lot of exchange about, like, they, they did a lot of work about how a pipeline could work. And they finally decided to use Blender uh, in their production, so, and they, are also thinking to like push code back to the community, so that's something really cool for, for, for me. And we, <laughs> and finally we organized the jam. So I'm going to show you that. But just before, I want to show you a really quickly a, a small demo, a tech demo that I've done. Uh, I, I remember I was l walking to the office and in my head I was like, oh, I need to show what EV is. And at the beginning it was like, I think it was in alpha version, the, the, this test. And uh, I started to try to create a bust uh, in a more realistic way. It was crashing a lot, but it was also uh, a video for me that I could push internally and say, oh, look, 
this is cool. You can groom in real time hair. You can like create procedural brush to like add scars, blood scars in the in the head. You can sculpt. You can retopologize. You can basically stay in Blender doing like things like that. Of course, it's not perfect, but for me, it was also a way to to say you can do this kind of stuff in a very short amount of time. So this uh, video was shared internally. And so yes, I said it, but we joined the corporate gold. Uh, uh, membership of uh, of Blender, and um, we also had the chance to have a training uh, with Siren and Yorun. Yeah, <laughs> uh, thanks to Ubisoft Animation Studio, uh, they uh, invited me to to be part of this training, and uh, we actually were in the lab. So you can see it, the, the face of different people I'm working with here from uh, the Animation Studio, and the Blender Jam was the event that we organized. So uh, Robert, the senior uh, programmer that I'm working with, told me one day, well, it could be nice if we invite some students from the best animation school and game, game school uh, from Paris or from France to team up with Ubisoft people so they can, so the student can teach Blender stuff at the, uh, uh, to the Ubisoft people that don't know Blender and the Ubisoft uh, people could teach them what is like the real work, uh, what, what what is actual real production is, and so they can exchange it. It, it ended up being like a s so amazing for us. And here are some photos of the of the jam. It was at the Strategic Innovation Lab, and uh, it was such a great moment. We also had the chance to have Pablo in the in the jury, so it was like such a great moment meeting those amazing people. And here is the, the communication team that organized the event. It was such a great work, and it was over a weekend. And uh, I have a really short video that sums up, uh, it's in French, sorry, <laughs> but that sums up uh, like the event in terms of what we've, what we've done. <laughs> so you are visiting our office at the Strategy Innovation Lab. <laughs> I did a master class at some point showing stuff like bendy bones, <laughs> lattices. And the idea was that the students and the mentors, uh, um, the, the idea was to create projects around different themes. So we had themes like uh, um, stylized, we had themes like uh, from micro to micro. And, um, and uh, the idea was to combine this with Ubisoft licenses. And it was a video that was shown before the jury. And finally, uh, here is the final picture with the jury, the, stu the students, and the use of people. And it was such an honor to have this great ju uh, jury. In fact, we had the chance to have, as the president of the jury, uh, the, um, the chief uh, creative officer of Ubisoft. And uh, this was like such an honor. And we had like so many cool people in the team. And in the middle, we have Pablo, we have Pablo so I was like a, a little kid, you know, like, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> so I would like to thank, uh, like, so many people. <laughs> I cannot say the names because it will uh, take an hour, but, uh, like, at Ubisoft, there are so many people that are involved in uh, learning Blender, like, uh, uh, trying to, to see how we can like uh, put this tool as another tool for our artists to use in production. So it's in fact, it's just the beginning for us. So we are working on it. And uh, I would like to thank all the Blender community, uh, Ton for creating Blender. It's such a great tool. And all the people uh, that worked at the Blender Foundation, it was like amazing to meet you this week, this, uh, this uh, Blender conference. So thanks a lot.